If we did, if we had the chance, we'd kill him again. God wanted to be your friend. He wanted to have a relationship with you because he loved you and cared for you so much. Paul said, scarcely for a righteous man would one die. Well, maybe for a righteous man. But God shows His love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, He gave His Son, who died for us, to bring reconciliation. That is the God that you serve. That is a love that can never be broken. Nothing can interfere with it. And nothing can take it away. Okay? Be sober. What does that word mean, sober? Awake, serious, aware. Oh, I see it. I see it. Don't be drunk. Right? <laughs> what happens to your mind when you become drunk? Impaired thinking. Impaired thinking. The first thing that alcohol does is it goes right to the part of your brain that helps you see right from wrong. Why do you think it's so much easier to do wrong things when you're drunk? Okay? Be sober. Understand what's going on. Keep your mind and your body in such a state that you're able to think clearly. This is why the Adventists have a health message. Be vigilant. What's that word mean? Vigilant, watchful. Okay, that's one meaning of it. Anybody else have an idea? Alert. See, listen, that big book that you guys brought? That would be what you would use this for. So vigilant, you would go in there looking vigilant. She brought us a, a, a dinosaur. Yes, sounds like a dinosaur. <laughs> right. It's about that thick. But you would look in there under that word and give you all the words that mean that same thing. So, be vigilant, meaning listen. One of the things as a boss that will drive me crazy very quickly is mentally lazy employees. Employees whose minds are not in their work. Because with what we do, you can cause great damage, but more than that, you can hurt yourself or somebody else very quickly. Watchful, attentive, alert, aware. How focused? How many more words need to be said that? This is what you need to be on a daily basis. But not just daily basis, but hourly and every minute. You need to be aware of what's going on. Do not become mentally lazy in your walk with Christ, in your spirituality. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a what? Now, is that a roaring lion just want to be petted like a nice kitty cat? He wants to eat you. Isn't that what that word devour means? Isn't that what lions do? <laughs> Give it a chance and not enough food, a lion will eat a person. You become part of the food chain. And to him, you're just another meal. Now... He uses the word lion because they understood back in that day how dangerous lions were. But he's talking about not a real lion, but he's talking about the devil himself. Is your adversary dangerous? Does your adversary ever give up? He is relentless. He doesn't sleep. And he has got one thought, and that is your destruction. If you have claimed Jesus Christ and you live for him, the devil hates you. Don't you find it funny that the world thinks that the devil is their friend? And they think it's especially young people. The devil's cool. I want to be just like him. I want to go where he's at. Because that's where the fun is. How many of you guys saw the movie Pinocchio? Yeah. Pinocchio. You remember when Pinocchio goes to that island of the bad kids? And those kids are acting like bad kids? Pleasure Island. Was there, was there a consequence to pay for that? Yes. What's another word for a nose head? 
Yes. Listen. That tells a very good moral point about Pinocchio and that part of Pinocchio. Okay? You have to be vigilant, aware, and know that your adversary, the devil, is always looking for a weak spot in your armor. Always looking for a weak spot in your faith. And when he finds it, he will jump on it. He is not your friend. He doesn't care about you. The devil only cares about one person. You know who that is? Himself. Himself. Now, think about this. Can you imagine being the other evil angels that followed him? And when they found out the truth of his deception, realized he never cared about them at all. But he was the cause of their eternal loss. You ever thought about that? And yet they still listen to him? Why? Because he is their only hope that they can continue to survive. And if he can continue to create chaos and evil and let it run as long as it can, they still survive. Right? The whole thing is about getting more people to follow him than follow Jesus Christ. And if he could get one planet where he gets the whole entire planet, he can tell God, I was right, you were wrong, let me live. Will God let that happen? Why? Because he loves you so much. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Listen, how do we fight the devil? Verse 9, what does it say? Resist, resist him. How do we resist the devil? We resist him being steadfast in the faith. You can only resist the devil by your faith in Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ has been able to win against the devil. Right? Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Meaning that, listen, you ever think that you're the only one going through what you're going through? You know what I'm saying? I, I've, I've had that thought. I've, actually, words come out of my mouth before. It's like, why am I the only one who has to go through this stuff? Peter wants us to make sure that we know that what you're going through is the same sufferings that the brotherhood are going through in this world. Okay? You're not alone. So, resist him steadfast in the faith, but may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have what? Suffered. Now understand this. It doesn't say that maybe if you suffer a while. This is emphatic. This is what will happen. So that after you have suffered a while, you will be perfect. You will be established, strengthened, and God will settle you in the faith of Jesus. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Then he goes on to write about Silvanus, our faithful brother, as I consider him, I have written to you briefly, exhorting and testifying, that this is the true grace of God in which you stand. She who is in Babylon, elect together with you, greets you, and so does Mark, my son. Who is this guy, Mark, that Peter's talking about? Is it his real son? It is the same guy who wrote the Gospel of Mark. Yes. Okay? What's that? Okay, I didn't understand what that word is. <laughs> yes. And so does Mark, my son, greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to you all who are in Christ Jesus. And he finally ends it with what? Our closing hymn is hymn number 341.